and you see these barbed wire fences, it just makes you feel like you don't belong. Uh, but that's typically what it feels like to be a DC resident. must get statehood on the president's desk within the first 100 days of the 117th Congress. If we had, we were a state. Some of the things that we saw on January 6th could have been prevented. Uh, we, we would have been able to call in the National Guard. So what you see on all DC cars is taxation without representation. Uh, which pretty means, uh, what it means is that we're taxed in the city, and uh, we're taxed, we pay the most federal taxes per capita, uh, but we, we don't get representation. This shouldn't be a political issue. Uh, we should humanize the issue on DC statehood, and, and literally, it's a civil rights issue. Um, just as we saw in 1965, where there were millions of African Americans who didn't have the right to vote, is what we're seeing now. Uh, 700,000 plus residents, majority black and brown residents, who don't have a vote in their Congress. We're headed to my, uh, my grandmother's house, uh, my great-grandmother's house where I was born and raised. Um, I used to come to this house a lot, really, to start my day. Um, primarily because my mom always worked uh, when I was a kid from like 5 a.m. to like midnight every day. There is this song called like the Southeast Anthem, um, DJ Flex. Yeah, it's the official music of Washington, D.C. Uh, and this is what we get excited about, the, the things that make D.C. come together, make D.C. D.C. Miss Chocolate. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. This is my old um, elementary school teacher. Yeah, this is the house I was born and raised at. As I started to learn more about those issues in my community, um, it made me reflect on my, myself. I started to understand that those issues that existed in my household wasn't just unique to me as a young black male, young black kid. It was also many other black families across the city who, ex who were experiencing the same disparities and the same issues that I was so passionate about. So I wanted to act on those things. Gun violence is pretty prevalent in this community. There's people I grew up with, went to high school with, um, went to middle school with, uh, even elementary school, um, who I've seen gunned down um, uh, because of uh, community war. Um, there's people who I've seen uh, uh, experience uh, tragedy uh, because because of someone who didn't get the opportunity uh, at a, a opportunity to allow them to be economically advantaged. You can go to the mayor and talk about it, but you can't act on it at a federal level. Democrats want to make Washington a state because they want two new Democratic senators in perpetuity. Yes, Wyoming is smaller than Washington by population, but it has three times as many workers in mining, logging, and construction, and ten times as many workers in manufacturing. In other words, Wyoming is a well-rounded, working-class state. A new state of Washington would not be. I always get annoyed when I hear that there's no real people that live here or work here or D.C. isn't a, 
Uh, it doesn't have an industrial complex here that uh, factories or stuff like that. But I, I negate every point of that. A lot of the things that happen on the hill, the conversations we're having on the hill affects people, th those people who are struggling, uh, who really need those, um, that quality of healthcare to push by, who really depend on that COVID relief check to pay the rent. We got 18 presidential candidates to endorse 51 for 51, which gave us some momentum. This is our only shot at really truly achieving democracy. Uh, it's no reason why we don't utilize this moment where we have a democratic majority in the House, Senate, and the White House to not pass DC statehood. Uh, especially with 51 votes in the Senate. In the heart of the nation's capital, we can't preach democracy, but yet allow for residents to still not have access to that democracy.